No, Zay did not tell me about that. And on top of Zay not telling me, he constantly accused me of doing stuff like that with Jake when I didn't. But you wanna know why there's not a video of me and Jake in bed like that? Because that didn't happen. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to my channel. We have a very special guest here today. You might recognize her from the ultimatum from Netflix. One of like the newer shows, but it really took off. Like people were so invested. So I'm so excited to have Ray here to spill all of the tea and give us insight on what it was like filming the ultimatum. Ray, welcome to my channel. How are you doing? Have you done a lot of interviews Hello? lately? Um, I haven't done an interview for like two or three weeks. And this is my first time doing an interview without the whole like Netflix PR thing. So I'm very excited to get to chat with you. Yeah, so I've done a lot of interviews. I haven't done an interview in maybe about a, like a three weeks or a month now. So I'm excited to kind of talk over everything with you. Yeah. And since this is like your first interview in a while, are you ready to spill some hot tea you've never spilled before? Yes, I am. <laughs> okay, perfect. Now we've been following each other on TikTok for a while. So we are definitely besties. So we're going to really get the juice. And I have to know how you even got involved and started with the ultimatum to begin with. Like, how did they even find you? How did you get cast for the show? Okay. Um, so they were looking for people who all lived in Austin. Mm -hmm. So of course, you know, check that off. And then they were looking for people who had been in a relationship for a certain amount of time. So they messaged Zay and I on Instagram and they asked if we wanted to be a part of the Austin couples project. They didn't tell us it was called the ultimatum. So basically what the casting um, people, they were kind of looking for people who had just graduated college or were college age or maybe mid to late twenties. And one person in the couple was looking more to settle down than the other one. And we kind of fit that um, fit that mold. So we got casted. <laughs> That's so interesting because I think the biggest backlash of the show was that you guys were too young to complain about like this ultimatum. Like why are 23 and 24 year olds so concerned about getting married and having kids right away? So were you yeah. really looking? You were the one that gave the ultimatum, right? Yes. So were you really looking to marry Zay or was it more just like an opportunity to do the show and just explore your relationship? I think for me, I just really wanted him to step up more and commit more and post me online and take the next step in that sense. If it ended in an engagement, I was like, cool, you know, but I really just wanted him to step up more. And I think that's where it came into me being the one to um, issue the ultimatum. But I think the reason why it came across as so awkward is because him and I were kind of struggling um, at that point. And it kind of got to a point where I was like, kind of unhappy in the relationship. And he was like, Hey, let's go on. Let me show you what I can offer you during our trial marriage. Let's restart this. Let's go all in. So that's kind of what our mindset was going into the show. So I think that's why it's kind of awkward. Some points people are watching it and they're like, does she want to marry this guy? My original goal when filming started was to restart our relationship. And then if I got the ring cool, if I didn't, okay, whatever, but I wanted him to step up more. Yeah. So did you know, like going into that, like this kind of seemed like it was your test for a relationship, like almost like a couple's boot camp. So were you yes. like prepared to maybe go your separate ways at the end of the show? If it wasn't, if it didn't work out, like, was this truly your last attempt at your relationship? Like how much were you struggling? Yeah, this it's exactly what you just said. It was kind of like our like last attempt. I was kind of, you know, fed up at that point. And I think that it, it kind of was like, they said it was, you know, they said that we were going to get therapy and have like all these different workshops and get to talk to other people who were kind of in the same spot as us. So I thought, okay, this is going to be make it or break it. So whether I walk away with a ring, whether I walk away alone, I'm going to walk out of this with clarity. That was my main goal. And I told him that too. I was like, we, I just want us both to be happy. I love that. And you were like yeah. such a star on the show. I think from the beginning, a lot of people fell in love with your like infectious personality, but people also really fell in love with your relationship with Jake. Like it was so initial, so immediate. You had so much in common. I think out yeah. of all the couples, people were shipping you and Jake the most. So like, what was that kind of like filming with Jake? How deep was your connection with him? Yeah. Um, so first I do want to make a comment about the personality thing, because a lot of people did say that they felt like I didn't have enough personality on the show, but then some people said that they really liked my personality it was kind of split. 
But the way that filming went with Jake was we had this immediate connection and we did have a lot in common. I read a lot of backlash saying that I was like a pick me and I was just mm -hmm. very agreeable and I was trying to mirror his personality. And I really disagree with that because obviously what you don't see is my dates with other guys where I'm not as talkative. We have nothing in common. We're just sitting there looking at each other and I'm just like, okay, we don't have anything in common. I, the way I was with Jake, I wasn't like that with all the guys. And then I think that the hardest part of filming for me, one of the hardest parts of filming for me was there's a group scene that's not shown where we come in um, as a group together, but we walk in with the person in our trial marriage. So I'm in there with Jake, April sitting with Colby in the corner, Zay's at the bar with Shanique. We all came together to have dinner and drinks. And the way that I was connecting with Jake and we're laughing and vibing, I was kind of looking around and I was like, everybody's not on the same page as us. Are we doing too much? I was because like, you know, when you're in the room with the production and cameras, they're like, oh, yeah, this is great. Oh, yeah. Everybody's doing what you guys are doing. And then when we kind of checked in with the group, I'm like, oh, they're not holding hands. OK, they're not getting along. OK, we have way more in common than they have in common. And then from that group dinner, everybody like part of the cast was like, you guys need to be together. And I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. See, I never thought that you were a pick me girl. And I didn't even know that you were getting that backlash until you made like some TikToks about it and addressed it and like kind of defended yeah. yourself. And I was just like, oh, wow. Like a lot of people are really hating on Ray. Like, what is this? Like, yeah. I just thought you came across so likable and you were doing the experiment right because you were just like trusting your gut and you were going with the flow and you were vibing with Jake. Did it feel like you were cheating on Zay right away or was that out the window because it was part of the experiment? Um, I mean, it, it does kind of feel like cheating. I mean, we had a specific set of rules, like every couple had their own rules. So the way I looked at it was like, I do feel bad that we're connecting more, but also I'm following the rules that I was given. I'd never once broke the rules that I was given. So I was like, okay, I know what it looks like on camera. I understand what the gold box looks like. I don't care. I stuck to my rules. I followed them. Yeah. And like, it kind of came up at the reunion. Like, what do you, like, what do you want to clear up about Jake and what happened with your, like the box and everything? Like, how far did you guys go? Did you ever cheat on Zay or did it just not count as cheating? Cause there was a lot thrown your way. Right. So the only thing that we did was make out. I understand that so many people are going to watch and be like, that's not what happened. I understand perception. I also did sign an NDA, so I can't go into full detail. But what I will clear up about the box is that the box was given to us by someone. And, you know, I did kind of joke about it with Zay. I was like, oh, maybe we used it once, whatever. Um, also, people thought that there were actual sex toys in the box. There's no sex toys in the box. It was just mm -hmm. a box given to us because Jake and I were actually being kind of awkward physically. Like we had this great emotional connection, but we were a little bit awkward, like, oh, like we kissed. And then we were like, ah, you know, kind of felt bad about it. So we were given a box with massage oil and all those different things to try to like foster a physical connection. We actually didn't use the box. And, yeah, and, and if we had used the box, a certain someone would have had a full on meltdown. So we had to make it very clear that we didn't use the box. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, it's part of the show. I think like people need to understand watching that, like there are producers involved, not just on this show, but on every show where they're instigating situations and trying to make little moments. So we definitely got to give you the benefit of the doubt with that. Now, yeah. at the end, you and Jake really shocked me and kind of broke my heart. Like I was shipping you guys. I was so excited and you guys decided to go your separate ways. Mm -hmm. Why? Well, I think this is, I'm really glad that I get to clear this up. A lot of people thought that we were coupled up and that we weren't, mm -hmm. we were never actually coupled up. So the last day of filming, when he asked me on the trip, he, um, Zay and April were taking pictures of each other for Instagram and Jake and I were finishing filming at the ranch. April and I were never actually at the ranch at the same time. I think that's also a misconception because in the trailer, they showed me like walking up to like interrupt them. That never happened. Mm -hmm. But I was kind of confused when they actually filmed that last scene because to my understanding, they were done by that point. But I think that they just kind of had to answer the ultimatum. But then I was confused because Zay and I didn't have to film on the last day. I think maybe because Zay and I's breakup was way worse and it got physical. So maybe that's why they didn't have us come back together. But to my understanding, April and Jake had already kind of agreed to part ways. So when they filmed that last scene, of like them answering the ultimatum I was like okay that's kind of redundant but I guess you know for TV you know, TV yeah so um but yeah so he asked me on the trip and then um we wrapped filming or whatever and then um we went and grabbed food and then I met up with Zay and he met up with April because I wanted to be fully transparent about okay this is what you're going to see play out on TV and then we had already decided when we went to talk to our partners that we were not going to take the trip I felt like it was insensitive but also, mm -hmm. you know, it is a free trip. So I knew like 
Netflix was offering to pay for everything. So I was like, maybe we could go later in the future. But at that time I was like, I need to figure out my stuff. You need to figure out your stuff. You got to remember too, like filming, you're in like a pressure cooker. When you go back to real life, it's like, we still have our friends and family. He was still living with April at the time. So I'm like, how the heck are we going to go on a vacation? You know what I mean? Well, did you have to go right away? Because a lot of fans were upset that you didn't take the free vacation. Like, where would you have gone? And like, is it still up for grabs today? Like, I'm down to go with you to Bali. Like, let me know. We out here. (laughs) <laughs> um, no, I don't think it's up for grabs anymore. They made it clear that if we were to take the tickets that it would have had to be before the reunion. And I think that, you know, his destination destination spot probably would have been Australia. He talked to me a lot about travel. He loves water, anything Island. So anything like that, that's where we would have gone. But yeah, they probably wanted you to film it before the reunion. And then maybe they would have included a clip of it like in the at final the episode. Yeah. Or yeah. at the reunion and just kind of yeah. like give an update. I think they were really hoping you guys would have lasted or any couple would have, sh- would have switched up and actually made it work. Um, but yeah. what's your relationship with Jake today? And then do you still talk to April? Is that awkward or, cause it seems like she's moved on and has like a whole new boyfriend. Yeah, of course. So, um, my relationship with Jake is that, um, we don't talk every day, but we are cool. He told me recently that he's going to be moving to Las Vegas. Uh, he has a lot of friends out there. He's joining like a creator aisle. He's very excited about that. So we're cool, but we just don't talk as much. And then as far as April goes, we're kind of like social media buddies. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a group chat for the ultimatum and we are a part of that. And then Recently, she commented like a heart on one of my photos and we've exchanged a few messages back and forth about show related stuff, non show related stuff. So it was really never any beef there. Yeah. Like in during filming, I think that she kind of understood that she is the reason why her and Jake were on the show. Like when I tell you if there was one person who really didn't want to be there, it was definitely Jake. Like he really did not want to be there. So I think April was kind of looking at it like. I brought him into this and now I'm dealing with him connecting with someone. And also we thought everybody else was connecting the way that we were. So we're like, Oh, everybody's doing this. And then when we had the group meetup, we were like, okay, we need to relax. Yeah. I mean, or you just kind of go for it and just like, see what happens. Cause that's the whole point. You can't really, it's hard to compare yourself to like other couples. Maybe there was like a few people being a little judgmental because it, cause they're, the lines are just so blurred with the cheating and stuff. Yeah. But you say you have a group chat. Now, last time I checked your social media, you said that Zay was blocked. So are you guys in the same group chat? Are you in any communication? So- Zay is not in the group chat. He's the only cast member who's not in the group chat. Um, So he chose to leave the group chat on his own. No one kicked him out or anything like that. He just left the group chat right before the show dropped. Okay. I mean, let's get into this reunion um, because you were so mad and there was so much misconception about what made you so mad and what tipped you off. Yeah. What do you want to share? What can you clear up? Because you guys were really, really ready to like fight it out. I have to like tiptoe around my NDA, but basically what I can say is, you know, the reunion we filmed for a while, there was some stuff, of course, that was cut for time, but there was something that really set me off before when I raised my voice, when I said, what the is wrong with you? And I think people who knew me really well knew that something was said to set me off. It was in regards to another person. And I think that if you watch the show and you kind of see how like submissive I was and how I wasn't yelling and I wasn't really brought to that point and I'm not really that argumentative person. If you watch the reunion and you really know me, you'll know that I was set off Yeah, was defending someone else at that point, but it's not fully, you know, ah, contracts, but yeah. you know. Well, I mean, I think you kind of shared at the reunion that there was a girl you were seeing Were you like, have you, are you still seeing that girl? No. So, um, <laughs> Her and I were like casually, you know, dating. And then um, when Vanessa asked me who I was seeing at the time, it was her. Her and I kept our thing going for a few months and now we are cool. And it's so nice to have somebody that I was previously involved with just be respectful towards me, be kind towards me and not hate me. And um, there's just a lot of pressure to like post her and like reveal her identity. And I didn't really want to, you know, do all of that uh, just out of respect to her because I was getting a lot of hate. Um, it was just a lot of pressure to post and like be in that type of relationship. Um, recently the last thing I did was I actually went on a date with someone that I used to talk to and it's a guy. So just going through all of those things, it's just (laughs) been a, it's been a lot. And I'm in therapy and I'm figuring everything out. Yeah. I mean, that's awesome that you've kind of like come to terms with your sexuality and that you're being open about it. I do Mm -hmm. agree with you. It would have been a lot for her to kind of come into the equation, like the articles, the tabloids, like would have like 
you know, really caught up on that on the time. Mm-hmm. So it's good that you kept her private. Yeah. Um, and I did you- post a picture of us kissing on my like highlight reel with everything to do with the show, but I did respect her and cover up her face. Ooh, um, okay. But yeah. Now, did Zay know that you were bisexual or did anyone in your life know you were bisexual before the show and before you came out? So my dad didn't know. Um, the only family member that knew was my mom. So I had to come out to my entire family besides my mom. I had some friends that I grew up with that didn't know. And then I had my friends who are a part of the community that were aware. So I was like half in, half out of the closet. I had never been out on social media. So that was kind of hard. But Zay was aware because I had a girlfriend before Zay. Okay. And why was that? Because I feel like we live in such a open society. I mean, Austin seems like a really open place. Were you like struggling with it? Did you just not feel comfortable? Like what was holding you back? I was, I was struggling and I was trying to figure myself out. And, you know, I didn't, I didn't even tell my dad until he told me, Hey, I'm, I'm going to watch the reunion. Like when I get home from work and I was like, we need to have a talk. Like I literally waited up until the last minute to tell certain people in my life. I did lose contact with one friend and two family members and I'm completely okay with that. But the backlash isn't nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. I do get hate from random strangers online on a regular basis. I get DMs telling me that I'm going to burn in hell and that I'm a terrible person and that I'm setting like a terrible example. This is and that. Um, but ultimately I'm just glad that it's out. And I've just made this decision. Like if I date a woman, cool. But now the men that I have in like my life, like if I'm to like get serious, like even with the guy I just mentioned that I went on the date with, like he's accepting of the community. He doesn't invalidate my sexuality. He doesn't sexualize me. So just moving forward, that's like my headspace for dating. Like either you're in the community or you accept the community. Yeah. A hundred percent. And it's probably nice to come out on TV because then it's like the whole world can know. So you don't have to have those conversations. Like I remember when I was coming out, like when I was like 19 or 20, I had to tell everyone Mm -hmm. individually. And I'm just like, this is exhausting. Like this is, why does it have to be so hard? Um, yeah. But you probably feel so relieved now. And like, now there's no holding back. And if people don't like you and they don't accept you, that's not your problem. And I feel like you're also so open on social media. Like you're someone I love following. Cause I do feel like you keep it real and you're 100. So yeah. it's like, how do you, how do you kind of handle any backlash you get? Like, cause you're always on live. You're always like doing your thing. Like how has it been since becoming in the public eye? Um, so at first the backlash was really hard for me um, when it came to like people criticizing my mom or my friends, or even like seeing like Shanique get criticism or Jake get criticism or Madeline, it hurt me. Um, but then I kind of looked at it like, um, these people will never really meet us. Usually it's very rare that the people that don't like you are the ones that will come up to you at the bar and say hi to you or go to an event that you're hosting. And I realized most of the hate I was getting was on Twitter and Reddit. Um, don't look at Reddit. (laughs) I don't look at Reddit. I haven't read it, but I got some DMS from this girl and she was like, you're a nasty bitch. And you need to go look at the Reddit threads about you there. Everybody hates you. But then I got on TikTok and Instagram and all my comments were pretty positive and nice. Mm -hmm. And TikTok and Instagram is where you make money on social media. No one's ever going to say, Hey, can you make this Reddit post for my brand? Mm -hmm. Can you make a tweet for my brand? So I kind of realized where the hate was, I couldn't monetize it anyway. And, you know, I think the biggest thing is that people who are not as happy as you or not as successful than you will hate on you. Someone who's better looking than you and has more money than you or is happier than you will never talk down on what you're doing because they're doing something bigger than you. Period. Speak it. Like, see, you got it. You you learn like the lessons and I'm sure you grew so much from like the show and the experience. And like yeah. now you can just kind of thrive and you're popping off on social media and you're hosting like all of these nightclubs <laughs> and events. So like Fun. what's up in your life? Like, what are you working on right now? Um, right now, I still do bartending on the side. I'm focusing on getting more back into my nine to five when summer ends. And I hope that influencing and having this connection with everybody can continue on the side when I go back to working full time. It's been something that I really enjoy because when I don't look at the negative side of social media, there's such a positive side. Like Mm -hmm. there's this girl who came out to me um, after she saw the reunion episode and she just told me today, she just messaged me and she's like, I'm going on my first date with a girl today. You've really impacted me. And it's cool to know that I actually have like a positive impact on people. And I gave her advice. You know, she showed me what outfit she's going to wear, told me where her and the girl are going. And having interactions like that, like one interaction like that a day makes it worth like five hate DMs. While I am way more open um, on social media, I think it's made me more closed off about like my like love life. So like, Mm -hmm. I didn't even want to post the girl that I was talking to when I was talking to her or when we distance ourselves, I didn't want to post the guy that I just went on a date with. Like I'm very guarded about who I 
post that I'm like with now, if that makes sense. But yeah, because there's more people watching you. So it's like you don't need to give people free information. Like people are going to be invested in you regardless. You were on TV, you were on a big show. People like your following and like like your social media. So it's like you don't need to give away everything. Um, I have a few fun questions I want to ask. I'm curious what your thoughts were on like Colby and Madeline and them like getting married right there and pregnant. A lot of us were like mm-hmm. confused. <laughs> I was not confused okay. but maybe it's because I was there. Um, so on my dates with Colby, none of them were shown, but I actually had amazing dates with Colby, not in a romantic way, but just in the way of like talking to him. So on the show, Colby comes off as like this, like mm-hmm. kind of like a dreamer. And then Madeline is like the more like grounded one. And he was like, I know people think I'm like, might be unrealistic, but he told me, he was like, I mean, everything I say, Madeline is it for me. She is my dream girl. I want to start a family with her as soon as possible. I want to get married to her. I'm going to get through the show and she's going to have a ring by the end of this. Like he told me straight up. He's like, wow. he's like Madeline is my girl. He said, it's a Kissinger thing. He said, <laughs> when he laid eyes on her, he had this feeling. And then the more they got to know each other, he was just head over heels from with Madeline from day one. So the way that Colby talked to me about it, I was like, this man has his mind made up and he is very determined. I couldn't see it going any other way. Yeah. I, I can't even believe they got pregnant. I mean, that kind of also made the finale as well. Like everyone was like so happy to see that. What are your yes. thoughts on Alexis and Hunter? They just got married um, yes. last weekend. You weren't invited mm-hmm. to the wedding. Do you still keep up with them? Yeah, absolutely. Um, So no, no one from the show went to the wedding. It was all like their very close friends and family out in LA. Um, But I do still talk to Alexis actually. And I, I think the wedding went exactly how she wanted it to go. It was so glamorous. It looked like top of the line. Like Mm -hmm. I am very happy for them and they seem very happy. They're actually heading on the way to Greece right now. Oh yes. I love them. I met them actually last month and um, I talked to Alexa. I talked to Alexis sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Which was like so fun to meet everybody. People were giving Alexis backlash though, for the people magazine photo with like her face, like the smirk. What were your thoughts on that? Okay. So when I saw it, I thought it was like a, like a sleigh. I thought, okay, she's doing this. Like it's giving, you know, it's giving cover girl. It's giving dramatic. It's (laughs) giving like glam bride. Like I just thought she looked like a Kardashian or something. I didn't think that she looked miserable, but I mean, there's other pictures of her smiling. I just think that was the main one that they were like posted. I just thought she looked really hot. I thought she looked good. I thought she looked glam makeup on point. I didn't think that she looked sad, but I know her in person. So if Alexis is going to do anything, she's going to slay. She had the best outfits the whole show. So, I mean, that's just her thing. Period. Yeah. I mean, it felt like, I don't know if people was trying to like get a reaction. I mean, I thought she looked good too, but it was like a really serious face. Usually yes, on like those people wedding photos, you expect like a big smile. Right. So. Especially because it's people. Like maybe if it was on like Vogue or something more like fashion based. Yeah. Maybe people would have been like, oh, it's giving. But I think maybe because it's people, that's why it got backlash. I don't know. But then it's so hard for me to look at posts of like Colby and Madeline, Shanique and Randall, any videos or articles about anybody from the show. Cause I just know them so personally. So anything I look at, I'm like, Oh, my friends look good. And then I'll read comments and I'll be like, what? <laughs> yeah. It's so funny. Now, do you talk to anyone from other Netflix reality shows? Like, are you friends with anyone? Cause there's a lot of you guys in Austin. Yes. Um, I talked to Kay Perez from 20 somethings. Um, him and I went out to Mayfair. I absolutely love him. Kiki. On- yes. I plan on going to do rain with him soon. Absolutely um, obsessed with him. I have had some DMS with people from Netflix shows, like some of the girls from um, selling uh, Tampa or maybe it's selling one of those shows. Yeah. I think the one in Miami. I don't know. Yeah. Selling Tampa. Um, I follow Matt from the circle. I follow James from the circle. I'm, I'm cool with some people. I kind of had a weird DM exchange with Holly Scarfone from too hot to handle. Mm-hmm where she had done a podcast with Zay and she stopped him because him and the other host were calling me a bitch. And she was like, Ray is misguided, but let's not call her names. So I messaged her and I said, I appreciate you not letting them call me that, but you're misguided. And I explained to her why (laughs) his perspective on everything Thing was not accurate and I dropped some receipts and I was like just so you know and she was like oh okay like I completely understand she's been through the whole editing thing she's been through being on a show she's been through 
a public, like she got with Nathan and they weren't together. So she, she understood me a little bit. We don't follow each other or anything, but I did have that exchange with Holly. So. Well, it's good that you were able to talk it out and like be mature and level-headed. Now <laughs> the ultimatum season two, they said it's going to mm-hmm. be a queer season. Yes, How do you think that's going to be different? And do you wish that maybe you went on that season instead? <laughs> <laughs> I definitely am glad I, you couldn't pay me enough to do another season of the ultimatum. (laughs) Love to work with Netflix again, do a different type of show, but the ultimatum is literal torture. Um, So I I would not want to be on that season, but season two is amazing. I don't want to spill too much about it, but it is a bunch of people in the queer community, primarily women. There is a non-binary person on there. And I think it's from what I've heard, I don't want to say too much, but it is spicier than our season more Ooh. drama, more connections. That's all I'm going to say. I just, okay. I, I cannot wait to watch it. I'm going to binge it probably in a day and do like a reaction video. Like I'm so excited. <laughs> oh, you're going to have to like give your thoughts and maybe we can go on TikTok live and like talk about the season yes. when it comes out. Um, That'll be so yeah. fun. Someone commented and they were like, because you're bi and because you went through the ultimatum, you have to talk about the queer season. Like you have to do a reaction videos. So I was like, I got it. I got you guys. Yeah. You need to host like the process after. actually works behind the scenes and I'm a part of the community. So I was like, I got this. Oh yeah. It's going to be so fun to follow you for that. Um, I mean, what else do you feel like you have to clear up? Do you feel like you like kind of got everything off your chest and everything? I do. Um, I guess I'm trying to think if I have anything else that I like need to clear. I mean, you and Zay are just done. Like you guys are not talking and just like, that's just the best. That is so done. Um, I think a lot of people think that like, I'm kind of like bitter about it but I'm just really happy that we're not together. Cause we are just so not, you know, meant to be together. Like there were things I found out at the reunion after filming the reunion where I was like, okay, I'm so happy that we are not a thing. Like Shanique told me so much information where I was like, holy shit. Okay. <laughs> really glad I'm not with this person. I think that I genuinely just want to say like, I love the people that we film the show with and I just really want the best for them moving forward. It's like a little ultimatum family. We are the only ones who understand what really went on. And I feel like you kind of did it because you're in, you did, you did like the show, like the Kelly Clarkson show. You're Mm -hmm. kind of been around show business. You went to that Netflix event, like you're popping, like (laughs) you kind of get how TV and how reality TV works. So you look at it through that lens and you're like really like intelligent with your perspective. A lot of people don't have that perspective. So thanks been really nice to chat with you yeah I study this shit Ray like I am a reality (laughs) tv expert um so I definitely get it I totally see both sides I would love to do like producing one day um on shows for sure and like hosting as well like hosting reunions I mean if Nick and Vanessa I would love to see you host the reunion for the queer season of the ultimatum Okay. I think you would ask the right questions. I think we need to email someone who we need to tag Netflix in this. I think that you would be the best person to host because I think you would ask the right questions and actually like get into it. Or maybe like an after show for Netflix would be cool. Cause I don't know if Nick and Vanessa are going anywhere. I have to also ask you about them real quick. Cause they get a lot yeah. of backlash. How do you Why? feel about that? I don't know. People don't do is, love them. All they do is just like present stuff and then they leave and then they come back and they do the re like, why do people give them hate? I think people are frustrated that they make a lot of, they just make it a lot about themselves. I know they're trying to give advice, but I think they just like, I don't even always think this, but this is just what I've seen online that they like relate it to themselves too much. Really? Because I felt better opening up after they were, cause you know, they're like this picture perfect Hollywood couple and they've been really successful. So when they kind of broke it down and they were like, this is how we started out. We've argued about this. We've done this, this, and that kind of made us on the show feel better about airing out our dirty laundry. Cause we had everything, whether it was shown or not, you got to understand, like I'm crying. Everybody's crying. Mm-hmm. Like it's a mess. So having them come on and say, Hey, we're not perfect either. I thought it was nice. I didn't really get to connect with Nick as much, but I had a lot of really great moments with Vanessa, even at the reunion, it wasn't shown, but when I was crying, Cause there was some stuff that went down. She came over and sat by me and like took my hand and was like, Hey, it's okay. And she was crying and like, she's very sweet. Um, she's very empathetic. So I had the best experience with Nick and Vanessa. Um, well then I'll take your word for it and we are going to support Nick and Vanessa. I believe you. And I, I definitely like them and have warmed up to them too. So they're great hosts in person. I don't know if they just, maybe on camera, it's just comes across very like professional and like presenter. But when the, when the cameras are off, like they're joking around, like they're funny, Mm -hmm. they're laughing, they're affectionate with each other. They're talking to us. They're making jokes. They're fun. I don't know. 
So yeah. where can, um, well, thank you so much for being here. I'm going to come to Austin um, next time you're in LA. Hit me up. We're definitely going to hang out. Um, where can everyone, yes, I love Kiki. He's so funny. Um, where can everyone follow you and keep up with you? Um, Ray.Williams on Instagram and then Ray will underscore on TikTok. I have a okay. Twitter, but I don't really post on there. <laughs> Okay, well, I will leave your links down below. So thank you everyone for listening. Be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe before you head out of here. And we will see you all later. Bye. Bye, guys.